Hey, Ronnie Dahl, four wheeling in Australia. Welcome to diesel versus petrol or gasoline. This video has come about from mass requests. It's all about off-road aspects of diesel versus petrol. A lot of people will sit there now and say, no, it's, it's an obvious choice, it's diesel. Not necessarily. There are a lot of different factors here. I'm gonna cover storage, transport, off-road, all different terrains, mud, hills, sand, everything. Also, just the longevity of the vehicles. Basically, every single thing. And if it's worth you getting a diesel or a petrol, which one's better? Stay tuned and find out. Before we get into it, we'll start with a fun fact. Diesel was first used by Rudolf Diesel. Not Vin Diesel, Rudolf Diesel. So next time you fill up your diesel, thank Rudolf Diesel for your diesel engine. Over here, we have petrol. Edward Butler was the first to use petrol in a carbureted vehicle. Uh, he also invented the carburetor, the spark plug, and the coil pack. Which one came first? Well, the correct answer is they came at the same time. Diesel is not a byproduct of the petrol, and it's not the other way around. In fact, kerosene was first. Petrol was considered a byproduct, which are then used in vehicles, motor vehicles. Diesel was later used to replace steam engines. So there we go. Let's get into storage and handling. Storage and handling on road and off road, and also transport. The first thing we'll talk about is petrol. Do you want that stuff on your roof? Probably not, but it's probably the safest spot to have it. You can't have it in your vehicle. So as far as storage goes, Petrol has vapors, diesel is more oil based, and petrol is flammable, diesel is combustible. Side note, flammable, combustible, how do you tell the difference? Well, there is a flash point right in the middle, 37.8 degrees Celsius. Anything that burns below that from a naked flame is flammable. Anything that burns above that is combustible. For example, petrol, negative 43 degrees, it'll just light up, it'll light up anywhere. Diesel, on the other hand, needs to be heated to about 52 degrees, thereabouts, depending on what additives are in it, before it starts igniting. Pros and cons to diesel and petrol, or gasoline, when it comes to storage, handling, and transport. Well, we all know that diesel is safer to store and transport. We also know it has a better shelf life if there's any cracks or leaks in it. Uh, Availability-wise, diesel again. Petrol, you're not gonna find that on farming equipment uh, machinery and mining equipment, they mainly use diesel. As far as other uses, petrol has way more uses. Generators, chainsaws, and starting a fire. I don't recommend doing that, but if you want to start a fire on a cold wintry night and all the wood's wet, you can do it with petrol, you can't do it with diesel. Filling up your vehicle from a jerry can. Okay, so petrol is a bit more dangerous to do it with, but you know, if it's in a controlled environment, it's pretty damn safe. Diesel on the other hand, if you get it on your hands, it is so hard to get off your skin. Petrol will burn your skin, but it's easier to wash off. Uh, also, diesel is heavier than petrol. Not by much, but it's still a pro to petrol. Vehicle cost, maintenance cost, it's all due to your engine. Petrol, gasoline, or diesel. Diesel engines are considerably heavier and stronger constructed than petrol engines. Why is that? Well, I think it's time for another side note. Thank you very much. So we're using a beer can in this case as a piston and cylinder. So both diesel and petrol use the same engine principles, the four strokes. We have intake stroke, we have compression stroke, power stroke, and the last one, exhaust stroke. Everything gets pushed out. The main difference between the two is when the fuel is injected into it. So take for instance a diesel, why they're so much heavier. Diesel is hard to control and it's got a slow hot burn. So when diesel is injected, it's injected right at the point where the compression, when you compress air, it increases in temperature because you're compressing all that air into one little space. That temperature increases to the point of auto ignition. Auto ignition is basically uh, when a substance will spontaneously combust. So at that point, diesel is injected into it on its own into the air that's already in there, that's compressed, and it explodes uncontrollably. 
all over inside the cylinder. And that is why diesel engines are built so much thicker, heavier, and stronger. And that's why it's so noisy. There's a lot of knocking, there's a lot of ticking, there's a rattling. That's why diesel engines are so much heavier. Let's take a petrol engine. Fuel and air is injected at the same time and a spark plug ignites the fuel at the perfect time. It's so much more controlled and it's so much more smoother and it's also why they can rev so much higher and you can get so much more out of a race car, for, for instance. Diesel motors are made for torque and are very hard to control on how everything is exploding inside those cylinders and that's why they're built so much stronger. We all know the difference now between diesel and petrol gasoline, but what does that mean in pros and cons? Well, for example, a diesel is much more expensive. Petrol's cheaper. But why is it more expensive? Well, because it's more robust built, it's stronger, it lasts longer in comparative to a petrol engine. Now, we're talking the same make and model, okay? I know that there's some diesel engines that won't outlast a petrol engine because it's a much better vehicle. We're talking same vehicle relative here. Parts are more expensive. Maintenance is more expensive. Take, for instance, a diesel fuel pump. Way more expensive than a petrol fuel pump. Petrol, it's a lot quieter and a lot smoother. Noisy, rattling, vibration. Driving my 70, it's a bloody noise box, but it's awesome because it's talky. Race car. When I talk petrol, I think race car. When I talk diesel, I think a tractor. But tractor, long slog through stuff, race car, smashing it up dunes. And we're going to get to off-roading in a sec. So the end thing here is diesel is an investment. Petrol is a vehicle you might have for about five years. Maintenance costs. Factor all those things in. Diesel versus petrol gasoline in fuel economy. Right, at idle, diesel is going to burn less fuel than a petrol. Why is that? Well, diesel is a combustible liquid, as you already know. So it takes, it's, it's a slower burn. And it's a more torque at a lower RPM. Why am I telling you this? Because it's going to have a factor in something very shortly. A petrol burns faster, revs higher. So at idle, diesel burns less, petrol burns more. Let's get to towing. You load up a trailer, you're going on a long trip. On a long trip, diesel is going to be far more efficient than your petrol motor. It may not be as fast, but it's going to burn a lot less because it's got higher torque at lower RPM. It may feel sluggish, and it is sluggish compared to a petrol, However, petrol will burn so much more fuel in, to be able to pull that trailer. Let's load a vehicle up. We load it right up with gear. We're at the GVM, we're over the GVM because that's what most people are, let's be honest. A diesel motor will still outperform a petrol motor. What we've all been waiting for, the terrains now, diesel versus petrol gasoline pros and cons, let's talk about sand. Now, this is going to come down to the driver, okay? This is going to come down to the driver and the type of vehicle, the, the age of the vehicle. But in most general cases, a petrol, I would consider more fun and better off-road on sand. However, a diesel will use less fuel and it has more torque. So to push through the sand in boggy conditions, torque is key to stay on top of the sand momentum and power and acceleration is key so let's move to a sand dune petrol way more fun and way better at it however if you get to the top and you're dropping an rpm that's where a diesel is going to go see you later petrol i'm going over that dune so there's a lot of factors involved here but generally speaking petrol is the winner on sand much more fun I think the fun aspect has, has got to come in here. Much more fun driving a petrol on sand. Rocky terrain, we're talking boulders, really uncomfortable rocky sections, places where you've got to worry about your panels. Diesel is the king of this kind of area. With an exception, if you have a ridiculous petrol with reduction gears and all that kind of gear, but that's not what we're talking about. 
we're talking about in general aspects speaking a diesel stock vehicle compared to a petrol stock vehicle will far better far be king of the rocks slow torque the slow acceleration crawling over rocks sure a petrol can actually match that but it needs to be a modern day petrol engine with an automatic transmission that has crawl control but where's the fun in that petrol manual and a diesel manual the diesel every day of the week now we get to uphill and there's all different kinds of hills this hills you can go fast on this hills you can go slow on regardless of which hill it is diesel especially on the low hills the low hills you want low torque slow acceleration you don't want to be smashing over rocks sure a petrol engine can do it but it'll be revving higher be going faster going downhill this is where diesel will absolutely smash petrol that's going downhill now with the exception of modern uh, petrols with the crawl control and all those other fancy systems a diesel is much better you use the engine compression you cannot beat engine compression on a diesel compared to a petrol the slow rpm the first gear low on a diesel going down you have so much control compared to a petrol and if a petrol is the olden day automatic forget about it you're going to have brake fade on a massive hill we're now talking about mud driving now there's all different kinds of mud driving but the main principle of mud driving is having mud tires with big gaps between the lugs and you want to inject the mud you, you actually want wheel spin in mud so petrol is king in this case rapid acceleration diesel can be a bit sluggish even the turbos petrol it's there it's bang power 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 diesel it's all about torque they can spin wheels of course but not as good as petrol <laughs> Long grass, dry environments. People always want to know, do DPFs really catch on fire? What about petrol engines? You know, people think about petrol with gasoline engines. Inside the engine of a diesel, we all know the compression goes to a point where it has auto ignition temperature. So it's a lot hotter inside the chamber. When it comes out of the exhaust pipe though, it's not as hot as a petrol engine. So in long grass, a petrol engine has a hotter exhaust and is more prone to grass fires than a diesel engine is. So if you're on a very remote trip, right out there and there's a lot of spin effects grass or there's a lot of tall grass, a diesel motor is, has less chance, is less prone to starting a vehicle fire. So think about that one. Yes, a DPF can probably level the stakes, but DPFs have heat shields around them. Some makes and models don't have as good heat shields. I won't mention a particular one in mind, but I'm sure someone put it in the comments below for me. Water crossings. Okay, so here we have a diesel and we have a petrol gasoline vehicle. We're talking, I'm going to talk modern day, you know, not carburetor stuff, okay? Forget about the carburetor stuff. You're crossing a river. A diesel motor, providing the snorkels on both vehicles and the air intake is completely 100% sealed, the diesel fares better than the petrol does. The petrol has more risk. It has all these coil packs, um, spark plugs, you know, all this electrical stuff you have to worry about. Sure, the modern diesels also have a lot of electrical stuff, but the petrol is more prone to that. Now, let's take a snorkel that's not 100% sealed. There's water into the intake the diesel will blow up a lot faster than the petrol will. The petrol can tolerate a bit more H2O inside the block than a diesel can. Diesel motor, 30 to 50 mils of water is going to kill that engine. You're going to get hydro lock. Game over. Diesel versus petrol, who wins in your mind? Well, I'll give you my thoughts, my conclusion on the whole thing. There's no denying that diesel won most of those pros and cons. However, it comes at a cost. And that is the cost. You pay more money, it's an investment. I think I mentioned that a couple of times. So if you want to invest in a vehicle you're going to keep for longer than five years at a time, diesel is the go. If you're not going to keep the vehicle for longer than five years and you're one of those people that trade in vehicles every five years like a lot of other people do, 
petrol. Petrol makes sense. Uh, if you are going remote places, you're doing a lot of touring, diesel. If, you, if you're just going fishing down to the beach, if you are just going on the occasional weekender, even if you're towing, even if you're overloaded, petrol's fine. It's just the frequency of your traveling and the investment in the vehicle. That's what I put it down to. So, you know, if you just like hitting the sand dunes, definitely go petrol. They're much more fun and they're much cheaper to repair as well. So that's my thoughts, that's my conclusion. I'd like to know yours, put it down below. And what are you gonna get? Are you gonna get a diesel or a petrol? Or have I just made the decision harder for you? Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to watch another versus video, I've got one on tires here, we've got one on automatic versus manual. Check those videos out, uh, subscribe here, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.